Hi, my name is Stephanie, and today I'm going to be reacting to Anthony Padilla's video, I Spent a Day with Autistic People. I have been told <laughs> that I should review this or watch this or whatever, so I'm going to react to it today. As always, thank you to those who suggested this and for my patrons voting on this video topic. Really quickly, I do want to point out my merch, uh, Just Keep Stimming. It is available in more than just long sleeves, so if you're not interested in long sleeves during the summer, this design in this style or whatever and many others are available at my merch link. You can check it out in the description box below. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'm gonna to be sitting down with people on the autism spectrum to learn the truth behind this often overlooked and misunderstood disorder. Should autism be accepted as a simple difference rather than a disorder? Or should society be doing everything in its power to discover a cure for this neurodivergence that affects such a vast amount of the population? Do those on the spectrum feel blessed to have the ability to view the world in a truly unique and heightened way that neurotypical or holistic people could never imagine? Or is being on the spectrum an immense hindrance they wish they could get rid of in order to perceive the world like everyone else? Do autistic people go through life proud of their disorder? Or do they hide in the shadows of society, overwhelmed with immense guilt and shame surrounding the hand they were dealt? So dramatic. <laughs> so what do you consider yourself? Autistic, someone with autism or on the spectrum? I consider myself autistic. I'm an autistic person. Most of the yeah. time, for those that are a bit more familiar, I mm -hmm. like to be on the spectrum. I like to say that I have autism because mm. it's more of just the whole, um, it's not me and it's just something that I have. I don't want mm. it to rule me. When I announced I was going to do this video, there was mm -hmm. a lot of people that were saying that I should refer to autistic people as people with autism and not autistic people. Mm -hmm. Are you, is there one that you prefer over the other? I think both of those are fine with me. I really don't have a preference. Mm. I'm pretty casual with it. Yeah. Usually autistic person because I feel like it just keeps my identity. I find these videos really important, especially to people who get kind of militant about language use. While many people do prefer autistic over with autism, you might notice that it doesn't matter all that much to people. They're not going to like die from being called one or the other, unless if it's done obviously uh, in a derogatory way, you obviously you wouldn't want to do that. But this, again, that concept of like, you must say it this way, it's kind of stupid because as an autistic individual and what we've been seeing in videos like these is like, I mean, yeah, I might prefer one or the other, but like at the same time, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's more of just a social disorder. I don't get a lot of social cues. Mm. There'll be times where I'm, for example, direct eye contact is not the greatest thing for me, oh. but I wouldn't be, um, but I wouldn't be like not listening. I like to multitask. I like oh. to do things like that. So it's almost like your brain's running too fast and it wants to see other things. Yes, yes. That's something that I do agree with a lot of times. It feels like my brain is running faster than my ability to get the things out. So like if I'm thinking really fast, it's too fast for my words to m m match and make up with them or it's too fast for my body to respond. And then on top of that, it tends to be too much <laughs> as well. So I think that's an interesting kind of thing there. When you're talking to someone, you have to look at someone directly, but mm. I, it's- That doesn't I'm come naturally. Saying, yeah, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> I think being autistic means you have more hurdles to go bigger hurdles, more hurdles, mm. everything's a bit more difficult. So every everything is just a track with a bunch of hurdles in the way and you're yes. constantly trying to jump over them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Being autistic is a different way of thinking. Mm. Our brains work differently than the average human being, like the way we process things and mm -hmm. experience things. For example, we could get really interested in things that other people would wouldn't typically be interested in like math or chemistry oh. or art and we get super focused on those. Do you consider autism to be a hindrance in your day-to-day -day life? I used to think it was, but now I think it's an advantage because I coped with my autism by social isolation and that gave me the opportunity to get better at the things that I like to do, for example, painting oh. and riding a bike because I can do those things by myself and they, make, they treat me like I'm you know, not as good as them or not as smart as they are, but yeah. I feel like I'm a normal pe person sometimes. I think I used to, but when adapting, I've 
now thought of it as a positive thing because I wouldn't be who I am. It used to be a hindrance when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. Now it's more of just another thing, mm -hmm. another exception. Mm -hmm. Just another trait that you exactly, have. Exactly, yeah. So really quickly, I kind of wanted to weigh in maybe on my thoughts on this. So I think that a lot of times this comes from perspective. So at first it might be taught to you like, this is a terrible thing to have. And you hear that narrative. And maybe as you get older, you're able to appreciate the things that maybe you didn't appreciate previously or weren't taught that you could appreciate. However, I would personally for me disagree that autism is just an advantage. Um, I do definitely think that it is both. And it really just depends on what you want to focus on. Do you want to focus on the hard stuff and the stuff that sucks about it or do you want to focus on the advantages that you have? And that perspective can really help determine how you're going to deal with your life, basically. We know that I'm high-functioning autism, right. but there's low-functioning autism in the sense of, like, there's also mild and severe, there's also mm. um, Asperger's, which it's on the autism spectrum. It can also be associated as its own thing. How does having autism affect your day-to-day -day life? Well, I'm seemingly normal on the outside, but on the inside, I'm, I'm different than the average person, and I get bullied from it. Oh, really? Yeah, even in adulthood. What specifically do people bully you for? Uh, usually it's the way that I talk or mm -hmm. look around. When I was a kid, I got bullied for everything. Uh. The way that I dress and... Well, there's this one math teacher who used to get so mad at me when I wouldn't do my homework. But I was just a kid. I didn't realize how important homework was. Yeah. And so you'd have the other students make sure that I wouldn't be able to play with them during recess. And so they would trip me with the jump rope and... Wait, who would trip you with a jump rope? The student that the teacher asked to watch over me to make sure that I wouldn't have a recess. Wait, you, a what? teacher? For not doing homework. A teacher told a kid to make sure you were miserable during recess. Yeah, oh. I felt- That is really messed up and super unacceptable. And I would hope that's not something that is normally seen. I do know that there tends to be a lot of issues when it comes to autism and other disabilities and teachers and how they handle things, why would you encourage her peers to do that? What is wrong with you? And to me, just yeah, that definitely. I would, I would feel like that too. Absolutely, yeah. that's tough. I think about it every single day. That's why I remember it like it was yesterday. And I thought, I thought there was nothing wrong with me. And then when I switched schools and they still bullied me at the other school, I was like, yeah. there's something wrong with me now. What's wrong? Uh. With me? I was almost 14 years old when they found out. Yeah. They had been testing me for ADD and it kept coming out negative. Mm -hmm. And all I remember as a kid was they kept pulling me out of classes to test me on stuff. And I'm like, why are they doing this to me? Yeah. I just went into the office and he, s he asked social questions. Yeah. Like, how do I, like, do I walk into a room and feel like everybody's staring at me or? Yeah. Yeah, he, he just watched my behavior a little bit when I was talking. And mm -hmm. After an hour, she turned to my mom and said, well, mom, she has autism. I was like, oh, and then she started bawling her eyes out. Was she happy or sad? She was heartbroken because she felt like she treated me wrong all these years. Oh. And my dad, too. My dad was crying. Oh, so they, yeah. how did they treat you? Did they treat you like you had? I don't know. I thought they were pretty nice with me. I don't know why they're... <laughs> yeah. I personally wasn't cognitive about it until, like, I was much, much later into um, my life, probably like around 14 or 15, when oh, I was yeah. able to actually understand that I'm autistic or mm. I have autism. But in terms of like parental and family, I didn't speak till I was four. I went to doctors and all that kind of mm. stuff and mm -hmm. they told them that I was diagnosed with autism. What was that like when you found out? When I found out, I couldn't comprehend it. I just didn't know what it meant. I didn't yeah. know what that means because like, it's not like I know what it means to be normal or anything. You're like, like, you're like what do you mean I have something? I'm just yeah. mean, I've always yeah, been like this. I, 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 I don't see anything wrong with me at all. Like when I was growing up, I had an aide. Yeah. So I thought it was just everyone had an aide. Right, you didn't notice that yeah. other people did not have aides? Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Well, I didn't I, I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel myself right now. <laughs> Can you explain what the sensory sensitivities uh, with autism are? For me, it's mostly sounds, yeah. like not loud noises, but someone talking on the phone in the room next to me, or the dog barking up the street, or maybe my neighbors hammering mm -hmm. a table or something. So, so it's less like physical sensory stuff. It's more just like yeah. a mental 
Yeah. Like you're fixating on certain details. Yeah, exactly. That too. It sounds a lot like, and I'm not saying it's mm -hmm. the exact same thing, but it sounds a lot like when I'm having a panic attack. And I get those, seriously. You get those too? Yeah. And you focus on one thing and you feel mm -hmm. like it's just overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. I get that. It's a pretty 24 good hours a day. comparison. You feel like you're having a panic attack 24 hours a day? Uh, well, sometimes it's worse than that. Sometimes I actually faint and that's way too Whoa. frequent. You'll faint from, from the anxiety that you feel? Yeah. Do you go through life proud of your autism or do you kind of keep it more of a, a secret? I mean, I guess, well, for me personally, because I'm higher functioning, actually most people won't even identify, like recognize me that I'm on the spectrum. Like, I remember when I first was coming out on Facebook, mm -hmm. a lot of the comments I would get, they were saying, I never knew, but um, I'm so great to hear your story. And, like, yeah. Like inspiring to see like those hurdles that you went through it's I would mm. never have believed you because it's an invisible life disorder so it's really hard to tell unless you're actually like get to know the person at first I was ashamed about it I try to keep it hidden I even try to convince myself that I wasn't autistic but now uh, but now I'm a self-advocate for it and yeah I'm trying to help other people that have it do you ever feel like people underestimate what you're capable of because you're on the spectrum yeah <laughs> yeah they underestimate intelligence and capability and even your ability to play sports and drive but oh really i feel like i'm a good athlete in some ways so people will say like wow you can not drive you're autistic i didn't know you could yeah, drive yeah like, why do you have your license you have autism it's like i'm not blind <laughs> <laughs> how do you think people without autism should interact with people who are on the spectrum treat us normally mm. <laughs> i keep mm. using normal i'm sorry <laughs> treat us like like you would anyone else? Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah. treat us like how you would treat anyone else. Um, be aware that the fact that we do have a mental disability, yeah. um, that we do have autism, mm -hmm. but don't be changing the way you speak, the yeah. way you act. Honestly speaking, you're one of the m more personal, casual people when it comes to talking to me, when it comes oh. to it. And that's good. Because oh, really? even though you're addressing the fact that I have autism, yeah. you're not like changing anything. You're not changing the way you act i've seen other videos with you in it and you're the same person the way you talk to other people versus me do you find that some people will just automatically change the way they talk with you yeah some people yeah i'm fine with really bubbly people because yeah. i feel welcome of course even though i seem unapproachable no you're not unapproachable i got to hear that <laughs> i didn't i didn't find that at least oh, yeah. the only difference that i see is there's less eye contact but that doesn't oh, okay. that doesn't bother me <laughs> Especially because okay. I understand what it is that, you know, the way that you perceive the world is a little bit different. Yeah. Especially with people who exhibit traits that become more obvious. So, like, having uh, issues with speech or maybe very obviously stimming is something that uh, tends to change how people talk to me. Uh, people sometimes immediately assume that you are basically like a child and they'll be like oh is that okay and they like talk in that weird voice like you don't understand or something like what are you doing dude like just i'm a human being and so are you like why are you treating me like that that some people have that autism is caused by vaccination i, I hate yeah. I, I hate like i i don't like using that word because i've been taught by my mother not to say the word hate but i, but like, I <laughs> It's based on a study that has no factual evidence to it, and the, and a lot of pe the doctors retracted their claims. Yeah. And on top of that, first of all, even if it did cause autism, why is having autism worse than having like polio? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Like, people are like, I'd rather my kid be dying of a disease. Yeah, I mean, I may be autistic, but at least I'm not dying. <laughs> Cynthia Wagner wants to know what you think society could be doing to better serve people with autism. It's okay if you can't understand it. I'm not expecting you to understand 100% of everything that goes down with mm -hmm, autism. Mm -hmm. But at least have an open mind and understand that, it, yes, it exists. Mm -hmm. It's not wrong. Mm -hmm. I have it. Other people have it, too. So just be mindful that it exists. What's something you wish you could say to everyone who doesn't understand autism and maybe doesn't want to take the time to understand autistic people. Autism is not an excuse to misbehave. It's not a learning disability. It's not social anxiety. It's just, it's simply a different way of thinking and a different way of experiencing the world. So I thought this was a pretty good video. I think that 
when it came to like comparison wise, I would say that I prefer the Jubilee video over this one just because maybe there's more time to just kind of naturally say things that they wanted to say at the time, if that makes sense. However, I still think that this was really done well. It was very respectful and it let people kind of see that we're just human beings. <laughs> That's just who we are. It's not, it's not a reason to treat other people poorly or anything like that. Let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments below in, you know, how it was done and also what was being said and if there was anything you kind of wish was said or things like that, let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to hear autism related things from me, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I upload it to this channel every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me through Patreon, and a special thank you to my spaz tier patron, Brian Kleinhammer. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!